Okay guys, so welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this mount on my Hobie Compass. I'm going to show you the wiring that I did to wire it to the back battery. And I'm also going to have some testing on the water at the end of the video. Some speed testing and some overall spot locking. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get right into it. So this tool is a contour gauge. It's usually used when you're doing tile around the corner of a wall or something like that. And so this was my idea of how to measure the contour of the front bow of the compass because as you'll see, you know, the main problem that I had is no company sells um, custom mounts for bow mounted trolling motors for the compass. I know they have them for the Outback, they have them for the uh, Pro Angler and of course a lot of other brands, but there are none made for the compass and I think the reason is just because of this this bow that is on a curve or an angle. So that was my uh, solution. I used this thing to create the two supports. Um, the front, this front uh, support that I'm doing now was even a little more complicated because as you'll see it kind of uh, slopes off a little bit steeper and it's a little bit uh, just quicker. So yeah, and it's not perfect as you'll see you know this contour gauge doesn't get it exact but uh, it gets it good enough and you'll see what I used to compensate any misalignments uh, again I'm using a one inch cutting board for this and you'll see what I used to cut it but the one inch cutting board does a very good job of being sturdy and being able to be cut and able to be bolted into the into the kayak hull so those are my two pieces. Time to get cutting. So I got one of the pieces out. We'll just have to shape it up right here at the corner. Not bad. Let's go test them out. That's right. So I want it to be a little bit forward even. I'll take that handle out. Take that handle out first. I'm counting. Are you hiding? Ten. Ready or not, here I come. What is this, Daddy? All right. So what that drill bit is is called a rasp. Uh, there's different sizes and shapes that you can get. Uh, I'll leave links to, of course, as much as uh, the stuff that I can find on Amazon for you. But you know, a lot of this stuff I got in my hardware store. Or this is in real time, but you see, it's not, it doesn't take off the plastic that fast. So it took me quite a while to get this done. Um, this was probably the most time consuming part. And there was a lot of going back and forth, you know, so I would carve a little bit off. I'd come back to the kayak. I'd notice that it would be off by a little bit. And then, you know, I'd mark that area and adjust, shave off a little bit more. And yeah, so I you know, had to do this quite a bit, especially that front piece, you know, that back piece, it had a very easy angle, like I was saying, and it worked easy. This front piece, uh, because there was a sharper, steeper angle and it was, you know, sort of sloping it frontward at the same time, you'll see how I'm trying to, you know, create like a secondary angle that slopes more towards the front. It just made it very complicated. So, yeah, this worked out, but again, it was a lot of work, and I just couldn't think of a faster way. Are you making stuff? Here you go. Oh, that's good. 
good. What I'm doing now is creating some through holes that I'll be placing the bolts through, but I'm having to put two different size drill bits through so that I can get uh, you know, the bolt through, but then I also want it to sort of be countersunk in there. So that's why I'm using this little drill bit too to kind of create a bigger hole so I can uh, countersunk these, uh, these bolts. Look, Bill. You have to find the batteries first. Which one? The tiny ones or the medium ones? Double A's. Two A's. They're medium. They're not super tiny. They're medium size. Do you have them there? I don't think so. Let me check. I don't think so. Check. So what I'm trying to show here too is that the reason I need to countersunk this is the top plate will go over top and I need a very smooth surface. You know, this one was on the side. I'm not sure why I put it on the side. I think it was just the angle I was trying to get there. But the countersunking was also important because of the top plate. Now I'm drilling the holes for the block after a lot of measuring and re-measuring. I really spent a lot of time measuring to make sure I put this in the right spot because there's just a lot going on. There's quite a lot of stuff on there. It's perfect. What it's is not, it? It's not going to hit. It's what not going to hit the uh, pieces coming on this side. So this piece, like it, can I see? Yep. The piece goes in. Like this. There you go. Like that. Yep. Good job, Peter. We have, to, we have to screw it into the kayak first. Thank you, Sophia. We're gonna do a lot of smoke. Alright, here we go. Here goes nothing. Okay. Uh oh, I need that one. Thank you, so. It's actually really solid. Whoa. Can I try it? <laughs> it's crazy. Can I try it? Yeah. Try it right here. <laughs> you try. All right. Push the button. Yeah, it's sharp. 
Measure six and a half. Six and a half. What are you guys doing? We're solid. Pieces are good. Hey, watch this. It feels solid and I haven't even put it, put the washer on the bottom. We'll do that tomorrow. Look, I'm gonna get on the smoke. Watch it on smoke. Whoa. You gotta tighten these two pieces up and put washers like this on the underside. And this is all stainless material. So now, I've done a lot of measurements. This is gonna go on top, right like this. So that's why the hand is like that. Let's see. I'm gonna have to drill this now. So that's the reason why I had to put that bolt on the side there because the top plate uh, screws that were going to come in at the top of those supports would have interfered with it. So that's the reasoning. And the reasoning that I'm countersunking all of these screws is because you'll see the, the plate for the motor itself actually sits on that outer dash line. So everything has to be, you know, underneath it. You want this pretty close to here. I have the holes preset. It's super easy to pick up. I love it. All right, so what I'm doing here is putting these plugs into the existing holes that I had made for that front handle. I just, you know, definitely don't want water getting in here. There's a lot of splashing that will happen here. So definitely have to plug these up. And I think this is the best way you sort of, you know, close it up and then seal it. And I think these work great. I don't think that's coming out. But there you go. This feels like really strong silicone, which basically it is. 
I feel pretty confident with that. Now we're gonna do the JB weld. We're gonna form the cracks. There's a gap. Cures in one hour. Sets in 25 minutes. We gotta semi quick here. Epoxy, this is the two part. So as soon as you mix these two together, it's go time. So I'm gonna start with about that much. And you can smell it. It's giving off a nice reaction. A lot of crows around lately. I don't know what they're all what they're buzzing about. Alright. So you see there. Now I kind of have like a gap, and that's what I want to fill. Really, doing, this is not attaching it. All this is doing is filling in the gap. stuff is so sticky it's not easy to work with I went with uh, you know an epoxy instead of like a silicone because again I really want something sturdy and strong to hold this in there all right so there you have it I'm gonna wire this thing up for the front. What I'm gonna do is have the plug come out and directly go into the hole here. So I'm gonna drill one hole here. I'm gonna run the cable, this cable. This is 10 gauge. 10 gauge marine cable, you know, two wire. And it's gonna run not too far. It's just gonna go from here down to right here where I have my transducer. Right where you see this, I'm gonna, there's a third part right here that I'm gonna pop out. I don't have the cable coming out of there. And then it'll have another plug so that I can easily just, from the outside, plug it in to the battery, which I'll always keep back there. So the one downside to this is that I will have an exterior cable kind of in the way. So it's gonna be like, you know, hanging out right here and going, back here to the to the battery like this so I could run it you know run it under here maybe and we're gonna use a cable gland all right so once we get that let's see here if it's pretty snugly then as you tighten this it fits even snugger it's almost, almost a clean water tight seal, but I think it'll be good enough. So this is a three quarter. Should fit perfectly. So we're going to take this out. Mm. 
It's not really. It's still not working. Are you sure you put the? So you leave it like that. You don't want it to be too. You want a gap right here. Huh? You want a gap. So those are nice and even. even. We're gonna have to solder it. Solder. solder it. And then we'll slide this over. Solder in. what? It can burn metal, Daddy? Hot can burn metal? Yeah, if the metal, if it's a soft metal, it can. If it's a smooth metal? You don't touch this, okay? Okay. I'm just going to get out of the boat. Good job. Okay. I didn't breathe it in. Good job. I just closed my mouth. Good. It's melting, right, Daddy? Yep. I'm getting my face this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a little warm, right? So now we put, see? So now it looks like this. Is this the super glue? No, this is the lubricant. You want to put some on? Just squeeze it a little bit. This one too. Okay. Put it in like that, right? And it's gonna go right together. Yeah, see? Clips. And then you stick it through here on this side. Like that. I think it, Is that the right side? I think I don't know. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know these stuff. You don't know this stuff? It doesn't like there, glue yourself on. Now it's connected now together. It's connected. It doesn't like stick on you. You can just take it off. Yeah. Oh, you hear that click? Yeah. That, that's it's enough. good. It's good yeah, to do see, that. It's nice and far. Yeah. See, and the camera can see it. So they got those things coming in. Coming right. out. You see them? Yeah, yeah, I can see them. Then you just go like this, and it slides up, and then it gets in nice and snug <sighs> and tight. It gets in nice and snug and tight. Look at that. It won't come out. Now we can the water do the get in. We didn't do did enough time. Good job, Peter. This was enough time. Thank you for helping me. Because right. when someone helps, now it's going to be faster. Yeah. Because now we're going to attach the trolling motor like this. So the motor is in the front. And it attaches. And it can go faster? Yeah. We're going to be able to like go all over the place. And then keep the boat really stationary. Like a speed boat, boat? Almost. Not that fast. We're now we're going to move to the new house. Pretty soon. Maybe in like a week or two. Good. You okay, have one? This oh, one. Don't use. We have to put these pieces oh, in after this piece, so. so first, yeah, you know, you'll see. We put the rubber stopper on first. No, he doesn't have any head. Then we can't see Okay. So we're gonna go in through here. So we gotta get this in ready now. Pull this back, it locks in.
Let's see, I make sure this is even. Yeah, yeah, it's a car alarm. It's a car alarm? Yeah. The car alarm is going off? Yeah. What? Off? Off means off means it turns off. There's no like what on means it's on. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Right, so the key now is to get this one. Very even. Maybe she's a little further up, but it's all right. So, yeah, this is pretty much ending it out with the wiring. Um, after you slide those two pieces into this one, I then put the rubber stopper back in, and then I put some liquid tape, like liquid electrical tape, at the connection. And I did that at the front one as well. Uh, you know, to me, that's just sort of helping seal it a little better because this is where water almost always gets in and corrodes the cables it's always at the connection so I'm trying to make this as watertight as possible and yeah so far so good uh, here you're seeing me do it on the, uh, the banana plugs which these are the ones that go to the battery yeah, it's pretty tight because there's some sand in there now here's the recap for when I'm gonna use uh, on the front you have the motor here, and I have it on an angle, slight angle, so it doesn't hit my camera when it's stowed, and also it just doesn't get in the way of the, the Mirage drive, because the Mirage drive is right here. Now we just plug these two in. Okay, now the power will go through here. It's right here. It comes out the kayak right here. under my seat, right to the side, right here, with access to the back. Now the way it connects to the battery, I have another short cable right here. Okay, that's locked. Here's my fuse. Now I just plug it in. That's it. We're connected and ready to go. It's the same battery as I used before. And all you do when we're done, now we just disconnect the battery. This piece will just you know, go in there. We'll leave this here. Disconnect here. Leave that there. And then that all right and that's it this is going to release it and this is going to let it down slowly push it there we go just needed a little a little help so you know a little bit to the left Go to the left. It is super smooth. Super smooth. Let's give it a little bump. And I also have the ability to steer. Oh yeah, we moving. What are we going right now? We're going 2.9. I have no idea like how many, you know, what's the range. But we're moving. This is pretty sweet. Over three miles an hour. And we're pretty going pretty good. 3.6. 3.6 miles an hour. 
Okay, that's the top. So our top speed is pretty much four miles an hour. 3.9, 3.98, right around four miles an hour. Let's bring that down. You know, obviously the front mount speed is not what you're like, you know, getting at. That's when I'll put it in the back. And then we should probably get more speed. We'll see. But this is where I want to do a spot lock. So let's do the spot lock thing. All right, so you see the uh, satellite is, is blue. So I think you hold down manual one, one, one. It goes away. Now I have to drive in a circle two times. I was facing that way. And it's pretty easy to drive in a circle with a pedal and a rudder. And when I complete this second circle, the satellite button should illuminate. It's getting kind of, there it goes. I think that means it's calibrated. Let's see if it does it. So I think this is a spot lock, right? Easy now, Tiger. Right, it pushes pretty hard. Definitely spot logging. Those were the two circles. Oh, that is too cool. To think of all that skill it takes to anchor something and just that easy. It's so silly. All right, let's see if you do this. No more spot lock. And now we're just drifting. So now we can turn it on. Ooh. Yeah, so you gotta be careful. You don't want it too uh, pumped up when you turn it off. Well, this is nice. I mean, this is like, I keep mine, you know, at like, if I keep it at like half speed and pedal, it's doing the similar thing that my side mounted motor did which is pretty much that it just helps me pedal easier that's really all i'm looking to get out of this thing spot lock in fast currents deep water and then pedal assist it's, it's beautiful you get pedal assist and you get spot lock best of both worlds all right and just to end it i wanted to show two clips of me uh, fighting fish with the motor uh, because you know that's really what's important is how the motor interacts while you're fighting a fish and you'll see here I'm, i've got a pretty big striped bass on this one and i go to spot lock while i'm fighting it and the motor kind of jerks towards the rod Ooh. and so yeah you saw that it kind of threw me off balance and thankfully the fish didn't swim to the left I ended up landing the fish, but yeah, you can see how it can be a little tricky sometimes. The second clip is took place, you know, I'm fighting some current, so I'm already spot locked as you can see. And now I'm working this uh, lure back and what's gonna happen is I will hook into a fish and immediately the fish goes down current behind me and I just get a very bad angle and you'll see what happens. So normally when you're just in a kayak naturally drifting, the front of the boat would point towards that fish. You know, I, I would pull it. But with the spot lock, you're kind of locked into that position. So yeah, I just don't like it. But you know, in closing, I do think it's just part of getting used to. Cause here you'll see as I'm trolling and I'm just fumbling for the motor to kind of release the spot lock. So again, it's, it's really just getting used to it. And I do think I will use this a little bit more 
uh, but it's going to be for specific uh, types of fishing and it's not going to be uh, replacing my my old motor and I actually think I prefer this motor in the stern uh, more than I like it in the bow but yeah that's those are my thoughts for now uh, definitely let you guys know any updates as I continue to fish you know with the motor um, but yeah thanks for watching I'll catch you guys on the next one